Everything looks better with a dram in your hand. Welcome again, one and all, to the third week of the Cask 88 Whiskey Lock-In. I think we're holding up pretty well, all things considered. We're being a little playful in our whiskey chat this week, talking about some independent bottles with real flair, discussing the advantages of making whiskey outside of Scotland, and I've invited on a musical guest with some real star power. Last week's Earth Day was a tremendous success. The planet has really bounced back thanks to us all being locked up indoors. And the garlic plant that I planted, well, you can see it's doing incredibly well. So I'll get to trimming my bush while you enjoy the first interview. On with the show. One of the signs of a great Scottish distillery is a powerful name. In many cases, the more difficult to pronounce the name of the distillery, the better the whisky coming from them. But this is not just a Scottish phenomenon. As whisky making spreads across the world, new distilleries with unique and complex names are coming to the fore. Supremely innovative and incredibly successful, Sweden's Makmura is a prime example of this. I'm on the line now with Makmura's Scottish ambassador, uh, Mickey Plummer. Mickey, how do you get on with these Swedish names? <laughs> it's um, a bit difficult, to be honest with you, a bit difficult. Uh, but no, uh, your pronunciation was spot on. Makmura is totally a Swedish whiskey now. How much of it is locally sourced? 100%. Everything from the water source, uh, the barley uh, is from a couple of farms just up the road, not very far from the whiskey village at all. Everything that we put into Makmira, uh, everything you get in the bottle is Swedish. Fantastic. Uh, but obviously we, we use traditional casks as well. Uh, so ex-bourbon, uh, ex-sherry, etc. And some weird and wonderful ones like uh, cloudberry wine. Uh, so uh, and our latest uh, spring release, uh, our Grand Tay. Uh, green or green tea uh, in English. Uh, we actually seasoned uh, ex Oloroso and ex Bourbon casks uh, with uh, green tea, so, uh, and that's our latest release. That's which is quite interesting. Very interesting and exciting indeed. I would like to try that because I've not come across anything even close. But that actually leads me into something I wanted to ask: that in Scotland we've been doing whiskey for a long time, but that means that a lot of rules and regulations have come up. They protect the industry and, you know, keep Scottish whiskey uh, strong, but it also can restrict a bit of innovation. So Makamura has a chance to do some things that we can't do in Scotland. Um, the green, the cloudberry wine, are there any other things that uh, you find yourselves doing? Uh, we follow a lot of the rules of Scotch uh, for aging, the, obviously the oak cask storage, all that sort of good thing. But yeah, we're not we're not we're not restricted on the casks that we can use. Uh, we even did we even did a release. I can't remember the name of it now. Uh, with birch sap wine, uh, and we released uh, last spring. We released apple blom, uh, which used their uh, cowbrush casks, uh, and that is a, a very very enjoyable jam indeed. Modern in lots of other ways, um, Macmira is quite eco smart in the way that you make whiskies as well. We actually moved from Macmira Brook. Uh, and built a gravity distillery just down the road. So we we roughly use only about 45 to 50 percent uh, energy uh, to what our traditional layout uh, distillery uses. But we don't ship anything offsite either. We've got a biomass boiler uh, to heat to, that stored in heated water so that provides heating for the distillery and for the process. And we have uh, a biomass burner as well. So any leftover gets fed into the digesters, etc., and that helps us produce energy. So that's a, a, a zero carbon footprint burner. So innovation on top of innovation. And in your maturation as well. Now, in Scotland, we're deeply into our dunnage warehouses and the great racks of casks. And Magmira has moved this underground, 50 meters underground into a disused mine. How did that happen? But uh, it was good luck and local knowledge, really. Uh, but underground larders have always been used in Sweden to store food. So they keep a steady temperature that's warmer than above ground uh, during the winter, so nothing freezes, and cooler during the summer. Uh, so things well, do what fridges are supposed to do, stay cool, really. Uh, the Bodus mine has a temperature that never goes above 10 degrees uh, and doesn't drop below 7 degrees. There's only a 3 degree fluctuation there. In Sweden, what is the right way to drink a whiskey? Same as everywhere else. Most importantly, 
with good company. There's no, there's no traditional Swedish uh, ritual or anything like that. Uh, we'll say Skoll as opposed to Sanja. Is Makmura doing anything special for the lockdown? Yes, we are. Uh, we're doing weekly tastings. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll do the tasting on a Wednesday or a Thursday evening. Uh, we'll, it's about 20 to 30 minutes. We'll talk through the product, ways you can drink it, ways you can different ways you can enjoy it, a bit of history about the product. Uh, and then on the Friday evening, uh, one of our brand ambassadors uh, is uh, a top cocktail maker, uh, and he'll be doing a cocktail specifically uh, with that product. Uh, and we're also available uh, to do uh, private whiskey tastings for whiskey clubs uh, and any groups of people. And with that, you'll get five drums and a tasting glass and delivered to your door. Fantastic. Mickey Plummer, thank you very much for talking to us today. That was absolutely enlightening. And um, without a whiskey in my hand, I hope it's not bad luck, but go. Schlange. <laughs> Careful viewers will remember that in episode one, I time-travelled back to the 19th century in order to get an interview there. Some of you have written in to ask if I performed proper time-travelling due diligence and closed the portal again behind me when I returned home. And I'm embarrassed to admit that I did not. I completely forgot and now all manner of historical figures are on the loose in the present day. But thankfully, due to the Covid lockdown, they didn't manage to get far. George Orwell, who was already self-isolating in the Hebrides in the 1940s, wandered through the portal in search of inspiration. And last I heard, he's been weathering out the lockdown on a small farm on the west coast of Scotland, helping to look after the animals. My sources tell me he's developed a particularly bad attitude towards the pigs. Let's hope he finds that inspiration he was looking for. Another person from the past who came through, the great John Lennon. Now, when he heard about the current state of the world, he immediately jumped into bed and hasn't come out again since. And I thought that this might be my chance for a potentially career-defining interview. Now, with the lockdown still very much in effect, celebrities are stuck at home much the same way the rest of us are. So I finally got a chance to secure an interview with the great John Lennon. Official advice is still that we stay indoors as much as we can, but John has taken this a step further. He's gone to bed and hasn't got up for weeks now. He joins us now. John Lennon, welcome, hello. Well, hello, Sam. Great to talk to you. Staying healthy. Yeah, yeah, can't complain. Listen, I'm a, I'm a massive fan. I have been for a long time. I absolutely love Maxwell Silverhammer. Oh, right, that's a Paul song, right, okay. Oh, right, um, of course, I meant uh, Here Comes the Sun. <laughs> that's a George song. Octopus's Garden. I think Ringo sang that one, you know. Right. Tell me about this bedding that you're doing. Isn't it quite an extreme way to interpret the government's advice? Well, you know, maybe. But I don't want to hot things up, you know. I want to cool things down. Going to bed is what I know, so... If that makes people laugh, then hey, that's a good thing, right? You know, do something eye-catching, you know, like... Grow your hair or cut it off. Have some sign on you that you're actually doing something. You know, stop asking if you... If it's gonna work, you know, do something yourself. How about you, Sam? What have you done? Have you drunk any good whiskeys lately? I'm constantly drinking good whiskeys, I assure you. But surely one of the keys to good health is to head outside and get a bit of exercise while we still can, even if that does mean congregating in the same small park. Listen, man, there's no park worth losing your life for. It's not worth getting killed for a park. You know, the, the best thing you can do is just get out of the whole goddamn town, you know. Let Corona have it. You know, just go home. It's it's not worth dying for. But it's what I truly believe. It's not worth getting sick for a park. Well, I suppose I can hold on a little bit longer if you and everyone else can. The struggle is in the mind. And if we can just put up with a few days at home without going crazy in bed or whatever, you know, then you've already won, right? Well, I suppose if we master ourselves, then we will be able to master this crisis. But I have to remember that this is a whiskey show, and maybe this will be the greatest device of all. John Lennon, what whiskeys are you drinking? What whiskey? Well, you know, I'm, I'm partial to a Glenmorangie, you know. I like a good good scotch. You know, it's been known, I, I do like a Bushmills, you know, from the north of Ireland, you know, I think it's Port Stewart. But I'm also partial to a Penderon, you know, from, I've got many friends over in South Wales, you know, I'm, I do like a pen down, and it has to be said. 
Oh, here comes one now. Here's Yoko. Thanks, Yoko. Cheers. Cheers. Slange. Well, thank you very much, John Lennon. Your advice truly is a shining example in these dark times. But tell me, while you're still going to be in bed a little longer under lockdown, well, how are you going to be keeping busy? How does a former Beatle keep busy? Well, making love, of course, <laughs> with my guitar. I'm in the middle of writing a song at the minute, you know, so that's keeping me busy. Would you like to hear some? Nothing would make me happier. Imagine there's no heaven It's easy if you try No hell below us Above his only sky Imagine all the people Living for today You You may say I'm a dreamer I'm a dreamer But I'm not the only one I hope someday You will join us Hope you join us, Sam Then the world one. There you go. It's not finished yet, you know, but I'm still working on it. I feel that that one could really blow up and be huge. Now, there are some fairly obvious obstacles in not having the uh, real John Lennon join us today. So let me introduce uh, the exceptionally talented singer, songwriter, theatre director and all-round great guy, Daniel Taylor. Hi guys, you okay? <laughs> Welcome to my bed. <laughs> Now, John Lennon's not your only character who you uh, perform on stage, is he? Uh, no, I do a number of different characters there. Another one I've been doing recently was uh, Tommy Cooper. Anyone remembers Tommy Cooper? Yeah, Tommy Cooper. In fact, I've got the fez here. This is Bear. He looks after my fez. There we are. It's my fez. Tommy Cooper, have anything to say on the subject of whiskey? Oh, whiskey? Yes. Uh, I want a whiskey, guys. I am. I am. I've lost three days already. <laughs> Someone came up to me and said, do you like to drink your whiskey neat? I said, no, sometimes I don't wear a tie and I leave my shirt hanging out. Ha, ha, ha! Oh, it's funny, isn't it? It's, it's funny. I've had a very sad day today, you know, Sam. Yes, I've had a very, very bad news, yeah. I, I backed a horse today at 20 to 1. It came in at 20 past 4. <laughs> Fantastic. So, um, Daniel, uh, you are obviously stuck in like the rest of us. Uh, are you able to do it, can, do any performing uh, while on lockdown or are you saving it all for a sort of grand re-entry uh, once this is all blown over? For me, I'm using the time to take a, I always try and take a bad situation and make it into a positive. And what I'm doing is I'm a songwriter, so I'm learning covers, which I never do. So I can go out and do cover sets or I can put them on my Instagram or on my Facebook page or whatever, Twitter page. And it's great fun playing my own stuff. So yeah, so you're collecting lots of material together while um, you've got the time to do it. And then when you head back out there, back into performing, where and how will people be able to see you again? We were meant to do John Le a Lennon show up in um, at Edinburgh this year, which Yoko Ono was involved with, called Lennon to a Glass Onion, which we had to cancel. We had to cancel a tour of um, uh, the, the Scottish play. <laughs> we postponed till next year. So these things are going to come back. So, you know, for me, to turn around to the actors and say, look, you know, it's not all dead in the water. You know, this is going to be even better than what we'd originally planned. So again, what we're doing is we're taking a situation where, you know, it's bad news for them and, and it is for me, you know, and saying, well, but we have this to look forward to. Mm. And I, I think also that you may even get the advantage that after all this, people are going to be so hungry to experience something real and not just on a small screen that theatres might um, see a few more bums on seats than they used to. You would hope so. You know, I was talking with um, the, the producers I'm working for. I'm doing Panto up at the uh, the Winter Gardens this year. I'm playing the Ugly Sister in Cinderella. And we're, we're up there. I spoke with the producer yesterday and um, they did a really nice thing, actually. They 
I think they, they, they've done a thing for the uh, the local NHS workers, frontline workers up there. And I think we're going to have our, our first opening night is going to be just for them. I think it's something like that, you know. I think that's a great message to take away from all of this. And I'll say Daniel Taylor, John Lennon, Tommy Cooper, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, you're welcome. Keep safe, everyone, and uh, stay in. <laughs>
but there's also a really nice um a really nice visual illusion that's happening there okay yes so this is our single malt irish whiskey label so this one here is an undisclosed distillery in ireland and you can see this spirit safe that we've drawn so here we have two into three or the three into two you mm. know it's that optical illusion and really that's a little joke on irish whiskey it's, it's a joke also on something that i have said quite a few times when i've been doing any whiskey tastings that one way to tell scotch apart from irish is Irish is triple distilled every time and Scotch tends to be double distilled. But uh, this label is kind of um, poking at that story and saying, well, not that straightforward. So yeah, it's, it's, it's muddy in the waters now. So if you're talking about Irish whiskey, um, remember this picture because um, double or triple, it's no longer quite so certain. Another one of my favorites is the, the Klein Leash label. So we're referencing cats, the, the two cats of the Brora and the Klein Leash Distillery. So if you look at the actual distillery labels from Brora and Klein Leash, they do use cats in their labels. Yeah, so there are lots of little hidden things in the labels. Mm. Now that was always going to be the Klein Leash label, but every time something, there's one small change between each batch. Aha. But sometimes your labels feature people who mean something to the whiskey industry, whiskey celebrities, as it were. So, um, well, if this TV show uh, blows up, what would I have to do to get myself on a bottle? So, yeah, yeah, we do put a few people on the labels from time to time, definitely, yeah. And certainly with the New World distilleries that we've been bottling, um, they have um, a say on on the label. We, we, we talk to them about what they want on the label. So, yeah, generally, some of them, you know, the distillers would like to feature on the label and tell a little story about their distillery. You know, that, I think that's really cool that we do with, we do that because we, we're not just about bottling scotch. We do bottle delicious whiskey from all around the world. Our latest New World whiskey was from Israel. So we've bottled some milk and honey. We're not afraid to find great whiskey from anywhere in the world because there are people making you know, it's not scotch, but they're putting their own stamp. And that's what they should be doing. It shouldn't be exactly the same scotch. We want new and exciting flavors to come out of it because Scotland has done scotch bloody well. Yeah. So why try and compete with that? Let's do something different. Absolutely. You always know you can come back to scotch for that kind of seal of quality, the kind of original way of doing things. But then if there's other places with a few different techniques, celebrate that and um, they, they, they can really astound you. So as well as Boutique uh, releasing these vibrant bottles, you also have uh, the Uncorked Whiskey Sessions, a, a kind of podcast. So my final question is, why should people listen to this and when should people listen to this? Ah, uh, yeah, well, the, the podcast is, we're trying to put the fun back into whiskey in a podcast. So it's a little bit of light entertainment with a little bit of history. We have guests. Um, it's not about beauty. We talk about what's going on in the world. So at the moment, we're talking about bringing whiskey home. We're, we're talking about current subjects. And, and we also, every now and again, we bring guests in and talk about their world of whiskey. You know, what, what does whiskey mean to you? It's about just Sounds talking. kind of familiar somehow. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, what we're doing right now, yeah. Uh, it's been a real pleasure to talk to you today. Thank you very much for having me, Sam. It's been a pleasure. Cheers. Good move, Dave Wilson. But I have you now. Checkmate. Task 88 advocates only responsible drinking. And there we are, another week's lock-in. Hopefully you learned a bit, were entertained a bit, and if you like, comment, subscribe, all those things, well, we can keep this party going just a little longer. Speaking of parties, this lockdown has now gone on long enough that I've had a birthday while behind closed doors. And usually after the credits, I join you for a dram, but this week I'd ask you to join me for one. Come and help me celebrate my lock-in birthday, hopefully the first of one. 
Goodbye, everybody. Take care. Sam, you case ready?